Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, those of you who've been watching my channel realize I've had mice get into my toolbox. And Harvey doesn't care for that much. You know, you open up your toolbox and mice jump out at you and they leave a nest that smells like mouse piss and so forth. So, that makes Harvey kind of cranky. What I've uh, come up with here is what I'm going to call the better mouse trap. It's kind of a compact size thing. Uh, what makes it better is um, a buddy of mine set up one of these with a five gallon uh, bucket and he put water in it and uh, he set it up in one of his sheds and uh, oh god did it stink. I, I mean we're talking um, he caught a lot of mice. I mean, the bucket had quite a, quite a bit of material in it, so to speak. But um, man, it, it stunk. It, it smelled like somebody uh, somebody left their uh, their dead aunt or dog or cow or deer out in the shed. I mean, it was just horrible. So um, the the trick is to use some kind of uh, like antifreeze. This was uh, from the dollar store. Um, and if you put some antifreeze in it, uh, they, I guess they kind of drink it and it takes them out quicker. Um, and, uh, it, it also preserves them so that they don't stink as much. So every once in a while you should, uh, fish them out of there and, uh, and get rid of them. But, um, it's, uh, it, it keeps, it keeps the smell down. That's what I'm told. That's what I'm hoping because I'm going to set this bucket up over here. Um, what I did is, you could see, I ran a wire through. This is a cap off of like a um, WD-40 can. And on the far side of it, I just jammed the cap from a water bottle into it. Made a hole through both of them. And once again, it spins around easily. And my theory... Or for people who have made these before, they'll come up the, to the stick and try to get to the peanut butter, slip and fall in, and hopefully drink lots of antifreeze and uh, go meet their maker. So we're going to set this up over here, and we'll see see how many of these. Uh, put it right there see how many of these guys well actually it probably shouldn't be there like that but you probably be more along edges right that way they think they're kind of getting away with something as they're scaring along the wall. I guess if I uh, come and check it tomorrow and I don't find anything, probably what I'm going to do is um, maybe leave it right along there. I don't know. Hopefully this is enough um, to attract them and uh, get them interested in, uh, in meeting up with their maker. Yeah, I opened up this drawer and you can see kind of the remnants of the nest in here. I gotta vacuum it out. But there was a um a full um mama mouse and her uh, her baby mice and uh the way you, you know part of the problem with touching a uh, a mouse nest is you can um there's that what is it, the, the HEPA virus or whatever you could catch from it, even just inhaling it and so forth. So I wanted to make sure I whacked the germs. So um, I sprayed it with this um, starting fluid and I soaked it pretty good. Um, then I discovered that there was still uh, mice in it because what I did is I closed the drawer and then when I opened the drawer, I discovered that uh, the the mice had had climbed out, but they were uh, they were pretty high. Um, they weren't moving very much. 
So um, I gave them a little more direct exposure to this. And it, it's a humane of way of putting them down. They basically go to sleep and they, um, they, they stay asleep. And, uh, you know, when they get wet with that stuff, I mean, just imagine sticking your human body in, uh, in, um, in the starting fluid. It, uh, you absorb it through your skin and uh, it'll make you quite high for a short period of time and then you're quite dead. So anyway, that's that's how I got rid of them. I can't I can't have mice living living in my garage here. Um, the other problem I have, though, from a poison point of view, I have fox that eat mice, and I have um, um, some feral cats that occasionally come around. I have uh, birds, hawks here and I, I really don't want to get the poison into into the uh, the food chain and even the the mice that I, uh, I I put down with the antifreeze exposure what I'm uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish them out of there and make sure I put them in the garbage because once again I don't I don't I don't have any use at all for mice but uh, everybody on up the food chain, I kind of get along with pretty good, except chipmunks and groundhogs and raccoons. Um, but I like fox. I like the hawk, even though it's flying around screaming its head off all the time. Um, I even don't mind the cats floating around. But uh, mice, you know, they move into your stuff and they crap all over. And, and once again, you end up cleaning up a nest and catching the HEPA virus and uh, you croak yourself on, uh, on uh, uh, some mouse disease that just doesn't cut it for me um, yeah so I fished most most of the uh, mouse nest out of there I'm figuring this stuff here would probably kill the HEPA virus also it's like an alcohol solvent I, I figured that it break down the cells and the virus took most of a can to mess up the nest and to uh, and to uh, put the mice down. So, anyway, um, any suggestions on the better mouse trap? Let me know. We'll see how well this works. I'm thinking it'll work good, but if I catch no mice, then uh, then it didn't work good. Um, I I could tell, um, you know, when mice kind of lick on a wheel or 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 rub, you know, kind of get their paws on it and get away. I'd be able to see that um, on on that wheel there, so um, then then I'll know that somehow they're getting out here and they're not falling in, or they're falling in and getting out again, um, and that that won't be good either. If that's the case, then what I'll have to do is upgrade it to a uh, bigger pail. There's about two inches worth of. Uh, um, antifreeze in the bottom of that and that windshield wiper antifreeze so I'm not I'm not thinking that they're gonna you know grab an you know uh, lung full of air you know sink to the bottom and push off the top and there's about uh, six more inches of bucket that they have to kind of leap out of I, I don't I don't think mice like walk on water or anything or walk on antifreeze or anything so I'm pretty sure once they're in the uh, drink there they'll be stuck in there and that'll be it for them. Anyway, folks, it's hard for Harvey to get much of anything done with it pouring out there like this. Well, hopefully you guys are getting some better weather where you are. Um, big, big flea market tomorrow. Um, it's one of Harvey's big three. You guys probably have it memorized by now. We got the car show in Rhinebeck. You have the garage sale at Stormville uh, in the spring, and that's tomorrow, uh, Saturday, the, what is it, 17th, Father's Day weekend, the Saturday of Father's Day weekend. And then there's one out in September, and that's it. I mean, other than that, you know, I occasionally go to Stormville to pick up some supplies. I occasionally go to flea markets down by, by my son. But they're, they're really not the big ones. There's certain markets I go through, go to with a uh, decent sized pile of cash because I tru truly plan on buying some stuff. And tomorrow is one of the big three of the year. 
Anyway, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and please get out there and enjoy all your days, even if it's pouring ass rain outside. Bye now, folks.